Don in London, hello, it's February the 10th, 2013, Sunday morning, grey out, politics on the TV, lots of talk about horse meat, it seems likely that I've had horse meat instead of beef, well, all I can say is it didn't taste too bad, but I don't like to be conned, and I don't like the idea of things being labelled wrongly, a bit like me, I don't want to be labelled wrongly. My, vide my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Recovery from addiction. So I, I am in recovery from alcoholism, or being an alcoholic, or I am an alcoholic in recovery, one day at a time. So my label is Don Alcoholic in Recovery, one day at a time. And what makes this possible? Well, it's the many voices of people in recovery which help me and are available on a daily basis. So it's not just about me and my opinion, it's about the many opinions and beliefs in a fellowship called Alcoholics Anonymous. The common ground, sober, life can work, and then the many opinions of how to be sober, and the many opinions on life and sobriety which make the difference every single day to me. So professionals got me there to the understanding that I could not keep being sober on my own. There is no cure and I'm not looking for one. I accept my emotional and spiritual outlook is recovery one day at a time and if I'm sober my feelings are probably okay, fitting with reality. I'm not a mountain full of old rubbish getting in the way. My feelings fit with reality and that's all about emotional and spiritual well-being which is where the fellowship of AA is. Interestingly we have common ground around, around sobriety and then we have different beliefs from different people all available to listen to and then you get your choices about how to live this one day. Your own personal choices based on how you see your life. Realistically what can I do sober today? That's what my videos are all about and sharing a bit of what goes on in my life. I also share the AA preamble so those who don't know what AA is there for can have a, an understanding of it and it also helps me slow down into the moment of now and try and share a message of experience, strength and hope. It's just one message, it's not enough. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share collectively their experience, strength and hope which is with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So that's what the fellowship is there to do. Uh, it doesn't contain gurus, and I'm not a guru. I'm going to point that out when I share my reflections for this morning. But I had a great day yesterday. I got out to two meetings, and uh, I'll share how it goes. Here we go. This is me. Oh, and also on the news this morning, they were talking about the damage done by alcoholic parents to their children. And my dad was an alcoholic. I can say that. He might have denied it, but he was. And the impact of him on me was, like father, like son, following in his footsteps in many ways, which I detested. Internally, I felt my way of living was wrong and I changed it but the habit of drink to fix myself stuck like glue and now it doesn't I'm unstuck or unhinged from what I used to use to fix myself so February is all about being restored to sanity came to believe that a power greater than me could restore me to sanity so sanity is what I would like to enjoy today of course I could be wrong said Ram Dass also known as Richard Alpert and he was I don't know if he's still about he probably may be but um, 
of course I could be wrong that's me I could be wrong for you and my message could be wrong for you being restored to sanity is not listening or believing in one person it is about ex accessing the higher power came to believe that a power greater than me will restore me to sanity always the many voices in the fellowship sharing experience strength and hope which keep me sober today and then there is a c cacophony of all the voices in the world which help me keep sober one day at a time so fellowship provides the principles the 12 steps which help me keep sober 12 living principles to live open honest and willing and then life happens and also that cacophony of other voices the other advice and wisdom which is out there which can be overwhelming sometimes until we hear something and we get an inkling of what next and it's important to trust our own feelings trust others enough to share their opinions and beliefs and then work out what is right for me or you so what is right for me might be wrong for you I will never have all the answers to your problems today because I usually I, because usually I'm dealing with all the stuff I have going on and on and how I relate to fellowships and how I relate how fellowship helps me every day <coughs> so how it helps me every day is I listen to people in meetings and I connect with their outlook and if it's working for me all well and good but it, you know sometimes I hear complete crap and sometimes maybe I talk what seems like complete, complete crap to you so the most important thing is to use what's in between your ears you know, utilize your senses and that you have judgment available to you some of the obvious insanity as a newcomer and this is me too <coughs> whether we whether you are male or female life is still going on and emotional and spiritual is de developing every day so we, our emotional and spiritual journey in life happens when we're born and then ends when we're dead so the emotional and spiritual journey the closer our feelings are to the moment of now and not full of old rubbish the better it is feelings fitting with what is going on and we cope good bad or ugly sometimes it's so joyful we are at extremes of happiness and sometimes it's the opposite so some of the obvious insanity as a newcomer whether you're male or female life is still going on and emotional and spiritual is developing every day so in other words you have your natural instincts still going on or that they were natural when you first were born or maybe they weren't but you know emotions can be all over the place by the time I got to fellowship my emotional and spiritual life had become very ugly and horrible and desolate but when I really engaged with fellowship and said to myself I, will, I would be all in and try to be sober and accept the painful transition which was going to happen physical pain and also an emotional mess my reality was f profoundly black and bleak and I was very afraid fear drove most of my actions emotionally and physically very ill the reality was to live in meetings and be in fel fellowship as much as I could through the waking hours of each day <coughs> now it's a personal choice I needed to be with people who were sober, laughed about their madness in the past, were able to laugh at themselves in the present moment and also share their grief and everything else that was going on. And I was like a sponge and I would be driven from extreme to extreme by what people shared and I had no emotional resilience of any sort. Everything just hit me face on without the drink and the fear fear of sliding back into drink was profound I'm glad it was because this felt like the last chance and I was not good in the first first few attempts it took me a bit of a, a go and I'm having to accept that painful transition now sanity higher power being restored to sanity by a higher power and humans it can be very attractive to be drawn to people who seem to have all the answers I certainly do not have all the answers when it comes to recovery and I learned early on in recovery there are many people who look like they are sober and well balanced and emotional well balanced emotionally and spiritually living 
and their feelings fitting with reality in the moment of now. But it was not necessarily so, and the same applies to me. We are not just, well, the, the reason why I say the same applies to me is that sometimes I just share how bloody awful life is. <coughs> you know, it's not meant to be gloriously fun and happy all the time, because there are good, bad and ugly times out there. So when our feelings fit with reality, good, bad or ugly, we're on track. You know, it's not about happy, clappy faces. This is about reality. Sometimes it is happy, clappy, because we're happy. But other times it's not. And I learned early on in recovery, there are many people who lo look like they're sober, but they're not. And the same applies to me. Sober emotionally, in other words, balanced. Sometimes they go to extremes. These feelings are there for a reason. If somebody hits us, it's shock, anger, resentment, and probably wanting to kill them because they've hit us, if it was unprovoked. But, you know, how do we get into those situations? That's part of coping with life, not getting into those situations. We are what we are just for one day. So the emotional and spiritual wisdom in fellowship is only as good as the day as we are there. So when I'm here sometimes, you might think, well, he's not very emotional and spiritual. But emotional and spiritual is reality. And that's what's important. So it's not to put on a brave face. <coughs> Putting on a brave face is pretending to be okay. It's like saying, I'm not going to show my feelings even if they're hurt. Well, better to show your feelings if you're hurt. And it's also better to have a small nervous breakdown rather than build up for a great big one like I had. And, um, you know, th these are my words of understanding. I don't know if they're wisdom, but it, it helps me to say them. Some days we hear something very profound and it shifts our perspective. And then the next day, the same person who was so profound the day before is shattered by something that has happened to them. And then it is how we understand how others cope with reality and the shattering of their serenity, which illuminates how we get on and live in the moment of now. Now, coping with hardship, ugliness, grief, these are very difficult things to do, and it leads back to relapse very often for those who don't understand how to keep sober. That we need to acknowledge the grief, live it, learn to understand what's happening to us, when we feel loss, pain and emptiness. We need to understand that and to be able to lean on people, many people. If we lean on one person, eventually they'll fall over or tell us to pack our bags and go, metaphorically speaking. We just can't deal with all of it at once. So that's why we have fellowship where we share our grief openly if we feel capable or able to do so. Being open and honest and willing getting the grief out there may feel uncomfortable to other people who are not used to hearing it but the point is truth is what it is so sharing the truth of grief loss exclusion or whatever it might be the painful is so important so it's real life dirty clean all of it and then it, it and then it's how we understand how others cope with the reality and sh the shattering of their serenity which illuminates how we get on and live in the moment of now. No single human has the answer for you. I don't have the answers for you. You develop your answers as you can. And as your, emo and as your emotional and spir spiritual balance allows, we are living just for one day, more with clarity about our feelings and coping with them. The only thing that seems to get in the way of human beings' feelings is the thinking bit. Thinking that we know we can control our feelings. Anyway, over-reliance on one person, over-reliance on me and my outlook is profoundly wrong, in my opinion. And it is. It would be profoundly wrong. It needs to be the many people. That's the higher power. If God works through people, it's the higher power. God also works by expressing, letting people express their grief as they choose and learning to express grief truthfully and openly will get back to cherishing life 
sooner rather than later but if we have deep feelings we get deep grief I think I'll say that in a minute sometimes I do connect and share something useful and sometimes I am simply the wrong person to be listening to so if you're profoundly believing in God oops, excuse me one second yeah that was my best friend on the phone just then <clears throat> who I saw last night very briefly and he got a cold there you go real life happening in the moment of now interruptions and uh, we've agreed we'll have a chat in an hour well half an hour or so anyway coming back to this I could be the wrong person to be listening to it's that it is that simple and the good news when I'm wrong for you in my outlook and opinions the common ground in fellowship is about sober and listening to everyone and how it impacts is as as, as good as it can be today so if my message is useless to you thank God it is because that's what it's meant to be because it doesn't fit with how you live your life and I'm very happy if you don't agree with me because it means you have made a free choice freedom to be you so I don't get I don't feel when people disagree with me I'm glad I'm happy I'm not going to try and persuade them to my point of view because this is not what fellowship is about fellowship is about common ground for sober and people develop their own opinions and beliefs and that's part of being restored to sanity knowing what is right for you is absolutely imperative and it's something you learn through time each day and I learn it and sometimes it's good sometimes I get off track sometimes I get every negative feeling the vices or defects of character as some people call them or I'm full of virtues but I'm never going to be a Puritan I'm a human being I'm a man and that's what I am natural instincts hopefully in the moment of now anyway here we go some days I'm helpful and sometimes and say something useful and other days I'm completely useless and say something which is not useful to you that's how fellowship works in meetings there are many voices and opinions about sobriety and we will connect with someone hopefully even when we don't connect with someone or the many all we need to do is find a new source of experience strength and hope and where I live I have gratitude because there are many meetings and many people who help me one day at a time and there were three guys yesterday who I connected with uh, one I see very rarely he's like a granddad well he's a granddad but he's like my dad in terms of affection and caring about what's happening to me and I see him as a dad really although I'm not that he's not that old and I've got two other granddads around as well ah, life is good my granddad was uh, my step was he my step granddad yeah he was he also drank a lot were when he died he was a golfer and up in the up in the attic there were hundreds and hundreds of empty whiskey bottles so I know what he was doing as he was going around the golf course anyway he did live a long time in a sort of pickle state it's just the way life is so I have gratitude there are many meetings and many people around me one day at a time so it's the higher power of many the multitude and the multitude can be wrong for me as well and some days it feels wrong and then I go to another meeting and it feels right again but it's normally me and my disturbance which is going on romance and finance new to sobriety romance and relationships are very tortured if you're already in one because we don't know or understand our emotional and spiritual balance and if we don't know our own emotional and spiritual balance how to live in the moment uh, a, a partner or a potential partner is going out with someone who doesn't know themselves very well is still driven mad by drink or ill because of the drink our feelings are all over the place extreme and hurting we can look for safe haven in all the wrong places so what drives us by nature me I'm attracted to women if you're a woman you may be attracted to men and then gay and all the other interactions it's better to pick somebody or people who you relate to without that sexual attraction going on because emotionally and spiritually we're not really 
able to make sense of life at all so cherish the relationship if you can which you're in but maybe consider who you're going to relate to in order to get sober our feelings all over the place extreme and hurting we can look for safe haven in all the wrong places but they feel right because the other bits are going on as well you know fixing ourselves with whatever we do and financially we may be okay or completely broke and the fellowship is not there to provide support in the material sense although many do find a roof over their heads through discussion and suggestion and offers offers of help hopefully made with unconditional love but in the main my suggestion is fellowship is for sobriety and not relationships in early days or rather relationships based on learning support and not being told what to do or leaning because of a, a love connection and fixing there are no gurus as such in life unless you make them a guru and probably those who have enough wisdom don't want to be a guru because they know it's only one part of the outlook of the world and it would be insane to think of relationships which would harm your sobriety today although I don't know how many of us deny the truth when it comes to relationships in early days our thinking tells us we can and our feelings are all over the place mine were I kept falling in love with beautiful women which is what I used to do I still love them but it's a different sort of love these days and it's not it's not based on trying to put them, get them into bed is based on respectful and unconditional connections but I don't forget that nature is nature so as long as I'm in a fairly fit state emotionally and spiritually I can engage in a romantic interlude if it happens and it's mutual but you know spiritual life is truth love and wisdom and it takes time to learn what our true feelings are because we're used to fixing ourselves and so we have doubts or challenges as I would put them challenges to our real life situation and what is possible and what is not possible anyway I feel pretty good this morning seeing my best, fe best friend briefly last night in a meeting was great and I was also able to get to two meetings yesterday and the topic in both meetings was gratitude I suppose the people who spoke first were old timers and they shared about how grateful they were to be sober gratitude difficult word when you're aching and fix wanting to fix and the outlook was for the future was freedom to make the best choices one day at a time I can say I was at these meetings and how they impacted on me but I cannot share specific content personal to persons unknown and their anonymity is key anonymity sanctuary to find out the truth of who we are and then what we do with it where we share our experience strength and hope is a personal choice but within the fellowship anonymity is sanctuary and I believe that's right some people say that anonymity is the spiritual foundation I have difficulties with that not because I don't want it to be that I just know it's not actually right for me and there are beliefs and opinions around that so anonymity sanctuary respectful of it and everyone at the same time my spiritual my spiritual core is truth love and wisdom learning it from the many inside and outside fellowship a lot of people have died recently and how to cope with grief and loss has been profound and friends I've known have passed recently I was grateful that they were sober and they they had been there for me in my early days they helped me learn what, is, what it is to cherish people and not to treat them with superficiality and indifference and the reason why I use the word cherish people 
and not treat them with superficiality or indifference is because my father on his deathbed talked about this he was upset about the way he treated my mother and because of the way he was brought up and the hardship and the horror of his early life he understood how to cherish or he understood what cherishing was but he was quite superficial and indifferent in his behaviour because he was fearful of life and connections which were deep and he was profoundly angry with life and what had happened and in denial about a lot of things not uncommon anyway although life will be good bad and ugly from time to time and all mixed up together we learn what we can and cannot do and the wisdom in the moment dealing with loss is all part of early recovery loss of our best friend the substance and losing the way we used to fix ourselves with people places and things relationships and the deeper we feel grief the deeper we have felt real life because we can only cherish others when we allow them to cherish us and how we learn to cherish ourselves by being sober just for today sober comes first and then the rest of life happens there are things we will never control usually our own emotions because we re react and respond to life mood is impacted by our environment and history at the same time if we follow our feelings sorry if we know our feelings we can think and then understand the actions which are possible and not possible today we become sensitive to life in the moment we get to understand how we connect and how we are included where we can be this is important we learn where we can be included and can be and we also learn there are places and people where we need to be excluded either by their own choice or the choices of the people who are better off in their opinion not knowing us anymore and that's fair enough because you know we haven't been able to we can't connect with everybody have a deep meaningful relationship to the same size we get to know some people quite deeply and cherish them we get to know other people reasonably deeply and cherish them and then we we go forward with a, a we go we approach each situation with love rather than hate looking for the best in but always aware that the worst can happen and knowing when to stay and when to go it's really important because there's nothing worse than an, an unwanted recovering alcoholic who gets resentful thinks they are expecting and entitled to something we have to work at each situation that's life we live life we work at each bit and no matter how many qualifications you think you've got about life the only place where anything works is now so you may have uh, diplomas in anything or everything and it means nothing in the moment of now mm. what counts is wisdom learned experience learned and approaching it with a new set of eyes if you can all about learning how to love, be loved, back and useful find useful endeavours as sobriety develops our emotional and spiritual outlook today I feel over-reliance on single sources in recovery is as dangerous as over-reliance on any sing single source of wisdom in the wider world of life truth, love and wisdom is always developed through many contacts and learning what is right and what is wrong the can do and cannot do in the moment of now we are easily led in early recovery that people are either useless to us or likely to be profoundly helpful and that is why it is so important to listen to the similarities of the many to see the broader picture of recovery and not just fasten onto one element or one human equally as fallible and equally able to be wrong as you can be today so when I said of course I could be wrong Ram Dass said that at the end of many lectures on life and spirituality I guess also known as Richard Alpert 
I don't know why he changed his name. Anyway, there you go. I would change my name if I could. I could, couldn't I? But there's no point now. Actually, I remember <coughs> um, there was an executive who had a shortened first name and he wanted a new shortened first name based on the long name and it was hilarious to everybody else but it was profoundly horrible for the, for the person who was trying to change his name because he preferred the other one to the one he'd always lived why? well the simple answer to that is sometimes we don't speak up for ourselves when we're young say call me this instead of that and then it becomes an issue and it's uh, it's a way a bully can get at you these days I don't give a, a damn either way but I remember I was equally I thought, I thought it was equally hilarious to uh, never mind the point was it was disrespectful of another person's outlook and I was quite super and indifferent towards it something that meant a lot to them it was a bad judgment call on my part I feel bad about that so it's all about learning but don't over rely never over rely on a single source because we're only as good as we can be today so some days I might be good and some days I might be bad for you or me yeah we are easily led into an early, early recovery that people are useless to us or likely to be profoundly helpful and that is why it is so important to listen to the similarities of the many to see the broader picture of recovery and not just one element or one human equally as fallible and equally able to be wrong as you can be wrong today all right we keep on learning the truth love and wisdom of now it does not reside in one person or one book it resides in reality as we see it and as others see it today and it can be quite argumentative quite heated and distorted the nature of humanity trying to work together in the moment of now and so that is why we have judgment we develop our common senses and we develop gumption and the broader picture of life as recovery opens the path to living reality living reality whatever that might be today so I know that and yet I'm wrong for you some days if not all the days you know it's the many voices and this is what I really find most helpful to me some person may say one thing about something and then another and another and by the time you've got the greater perspective we're all wrong or we come to an agreement that is none of our business or have you thought about this or have you thought about that there are suggestions it's not never about telling people no gurus no spiritual giants the, the best you can be is the spiritual giant you are today hopefully right sized and human sized so at the end of all my videos I share the serenity prayer to the higher power of your understanding and not mine because it's the God of your understanding the good of your understanding the high power of the many voices in AA, in AA how that serenity prayer works is can do, can't do wisdom to know the difference right now ah, deep sigh because I feel right about that it's probably the only thing I can feel right about right now so, to God or in good conscience God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference right now by the minute by the hour just for today love truth love and wisdom keep on changing in the moment of now as we become more informed about our feelings or our mood how it impacts on our thinking and the actions we take today